Well, here is the Savox SB2263 with a non standard arm on it, and I'm driving it from the Micromite here. By the way, you can see a Carson servo there, which is exactly the same uh, in plan, in size, uh, as the Savox one, but the Savox one is rather squatter, because it's a low profile one. I originally connected this to my 2 amp power supply here, but found it was current limiting, so I've now put it on the thing over here on the left, which is a, a, a 5 volt 7 amp uh, supply. And I've got, probably well, we can't see that there, but I've got a 0.1 ohm resistor uh, in series with the uh, servo supply so that I can measure the current. And that's being measured by my very old Picoscope ADC100, which is so old that it uses a 25-pin printer interface. So that goes through something that converts it back to a USB. And then onto my laptop here, which is an XP laptop, which is the only laptop that will only version of Windows that will run the software. Although described as having an aluminium case, uh, the only part of this case which is aluminium is, is the, uh, the sort of orange coloured bit in the middle. The top and the bottom are plastic. This is a slight nuisance really because uh, if there was any possibility of the server overheating one would like to bolt it onto some larger piece of metal which is not easy to see how one could do. But so far I've been operating it once every two seconds and it doesn't seem to have overheated at all, so um, so far so good. The Micromite is telling it, uh, giving it PWM signals which are uh, uh, one and a half milliseconds for centre, two milliseconds for right and one millisecond for left and it just goes on in a cycle like that. This is slightly less than the full range of the servo. This shows the typical current consumption of the Savox SB2263 when moving through half its range. Um, the current is measured through a 0.1 ohm resistor so uh, the scale here, which is in uh, 0.1 volts per division, it corresponds to amps. So when the server starts moving, it begins by drawing two amps, which declines in this sort of exponential manner down to here. And then it goes into a different mode in which it is mainly drawing naught but spikes at quite large figures up to just over 3 amps, these about 1.8 amps. Uh, and this lasts in this case for uh, 462 milliseconds. The average value of this current over this period is 378 milliamps. So in other words, to move through half its range, the servo takes an average of 378 milliamps for 462 milliseconds. So to summarize the current measurements I've just made, um, I measured the current when the servo was stationary and found that it was 43 milliamps all the time. Uh, the current when moving through about 55 degrees was an average of 378 milliamps for 460 milliseconds. If we consider that uh, we might want to move the rudder once a second, then we can calculate 
the current consumption that's going to occur uh, as shown here and it comes out to 197 milliamps continuous. My feeling is that that current is much too high to be within our energy budget and uh, that's one of the reasons for not using this type of servo uh, for Snoopy. Here is a comparison of two of the current consumption graphs. The top one is for moving from the left to the centre and the bottom one is moving from the centre to the right by the same distance or the same angle. Um, I think you can see that they're very similar except that the spiky stuff at the right uh, seems to be longer in the bottom one. If you look at the uh, exponential curve that starts off the current um, I speculate that uh, you can see it's it's just short of uh, 0.1 seconds in duration and the servo is specified to move through 60 degrees in 0.1 seconds so I speculate that this initial uh, exponential curve is actually the movement of the servo and the spiky stuff to the right may be just concerned with trying to break the ser servo and uh, bring it to a halt. I think this is confirmed by this slide where I've replaced the bottom graph by one in which the servo was moving from the right to the left, in other words through double the distance of the top graph and as you can see the exponential curve is longer but the stopping stuff is somewhat of the same length. What I'm going to do here is um, test the torque required to shift this. At the moment the servo's got no power on it. You probably won't be able to see this, but I can see it. One and a half kilograms. Now if we just put the power on, You can see that it's taking 50 milliamps, actually 43 milliamps idle. And I do it again. Exactly the same, 1.5 or 1.6. However, if I now apply a PWM signal to this, And you can watch the current as I pull it when I when I when I do so. I'm going to pull it as soon as it gets to the centre. Goes over two amps, and the torque required to move it was enormously much more. It went up to five kilograms at least. So when there's a PWM signal on the servo, it vigorously resists any attempt to move it from its desired position. And that's a summary of the torque measurements that I made. The servo is well able to resist any force that the rudder might be likely to exert upon it, uh, except uh, in the case of uh, Snoopy being thrown against rocks or something like that. Well, there we are. I've tested two possible ways of moving the rudder. The Savox SB2263MG, which has a very nice brushless motor in it and uh, gears would look fine, um, but it takes 43 milliamps continuously, even when it's doing nothing, and 380 milliamps when it's moving. And then we've got the JGY370 worm geared device which takes no milliamps at all when it's not doing anything and only 95 milliamps when it's moving. So the conclusion I draw is that probably the JGY 
is the better solution rather than using a very expensive, nicely designed but current consumptive um, brushless servo.